Welcome to everybody joining us for Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi's nursing podcast, Bedside to Breakthrough. My name is Joanne Bruton. I'm the Executive Director here for Perioperative Oncology, Ambulatory and Transplant Services. Today, I'm joined by um, two amazing caregivers here. We're going to hear about a really, really interesting nursing initiative and a career path that one is certainly um, a passion to me. And um, I have Mairead and Shinjiro. Could you please introduce yourselves? Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi's podcast. My name is Mairead Griffin. I'm the nursing operating room manager of the heart, vascular and thoracic operating room. So I'm Sinjara, I'm one of the staff nurses here in um, Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi um, HVTI uh, operating room level two. It's lovely to have you both um, today. We're going to talk about something um, fascinating to me for sure. Um, Mairead, as an a operating room manager, um, I know that this affects you as well. You've had some pretty big challenges in um, the robotics program. True, yeah, we've had an amazing journey and quite a development over the last 18 months, I would say, Shindra, yes. around that with our robotic program, um, which has been very amazing, quite challenging, but also very rewarding, I would have to say. Yes. Shindra, your experience is predominantly in robotic surgery. Yeah, my uh, latter um, nursing career evolves mostly on robotic okay. surgery. Yeah, because, yeah. It's just a um, like my passion to do nice. the um, robotic surgery. Yeah. Uh, it's a new um, discipline in um, in the surgery and in the in nursing also. Yeah. It's like a, a new um, and it's like the future of surgery. So true, it's an advance. To be involved it, in it would be a very great experience. Yeah. Too. When did you start in it? Oh, well, I um, started it when I started my nursing career in New Zealand and Australia. It was the beginning of the robotic surgery evolution in um, the surgical field, medical field. So as a, as a new guy in the team, I was tasked to do the um, uh, robotic surgery. So from then on, it snowballed all the robotic surgeries from cardiac, thoracic, general, everything, it's been like pass on me, so. They must have seen your potential. Yeah. Early. <laughs> and it's they good also because it's technology, new technology. It's like curiosity in me also, like how can nursing be involved in this implementation of technology in the operating room? Mm -hmm. True, yeah. and the advancements, I guess, yes. to see it progress. For me, I wasn't familiar with robotic surgery before Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. My main area would have been laparoscopic. And I suppose in one way, it's kind of an advancement of laparoscopic surgery, would you say? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's, um, robotic surgery is mainly a minimally invasive surgery using the okay. robot. Yes. So the surgeon uses the robotic arms to do the surgery, but right. he's in a console. Okay. So it's outside the um, um, operating field, but he's overseeing the whole surgery. Everything, okay, in yes. the room. So for nurses then in the operating room, what's the difference with robotic surgery if compared to, say, a regular laparoscopic case? What's the main areas? So the main, I think, difference would be the robot in itself. Like, okay. say, the robot is in, in the operating field. Yes and the robot is being used by the surgeon okay. to be like the one doing the surgery. Yes. But he's on a console, mm. he's using it to do the surgery. And I think the difference would be the surgeon is not in the operating field. True, yeah, which you so, always experience in the OR. We always have our surgeon yes. beside us. So. And then we always talk to each other. Yes. And then you can see by his cues on what he's uh, needs next on yeah. his um, surgery, but with this one, you're looking at a monitor. Yes, okay. Looking at what he needs, and also you're looking also at the patient. Yeah, it's it's quite like different. Like what's happening in the field. So you're the eyes. Yes. Of the surgeon inside the operating field okay. because he's not in there. Yeah. He's in a console, he's... and his eyes is only on the inside of the patient internal true internal of the yeah. patient so mm -hmm. nurses like get a big role in in robotic surgery true uh, yeah it's You're, not only the 
let's say if we got an assist from from uh, a surgeon assist okay it can be the one but as as a what you call this a um patient um advocate yes you would always think of the patient safety over there true true because, because surgeon is not there to yeah. oversee everything you're the eyes of the surgeon. You're the eyes and the ears. Mm. What's the challenges that can bring, though? It sounds like you have to prioritize communication, things like that. Or is there yes, any it's very important in robotic surgery is the communication between yes. the, all the, uh, all the uh, members of the team, from okay. anesthesia yes. to the surgeon, to the nurses, to the assist. Because the surgeon is not there in the operating field. Yes. He's in a console. Yes. He's like he's got his own um, world over yeah. there. It does, it <laughs> Although like he got he can hear you, but it's still different if he can see everyone else, True. right? So there's mic, there's speakers there. Yes. But I think you need to really have a good communication with each other. Yes. Like you have to have um, what they call the standardized. Um, protocols inside the room. Okay. May I say it's like if something happens, the anesthesia knows what they're gonna do. Okay. The nurses needs what they're gonna yes. do. The surgeon needs what they're gonna do. It's mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. very important. And I imagine you'd need to have quite an advanced level of understanding the various stages of their surgery. Yes. Unlike some. Um, yes. Scrub. Like what True. the research and and past um, papers have said. The in robotic surgery, they said that the nurse should be as proficient as the surgeon with the um, uh, robot itself. Okay. In 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 uh, what you call this, in um, troubleshooting, and um, yeah, yeah, setting it up and yes. everything. Because yeah, you're the eyes and the yes. the ears of the surgeon in the in the operating field. He's not there. It kind of rings to me when you're talking, it's such teamwork. It's like that synchronized teamwork that everyone is involved yes. in trickily kind of together, but it, it is. it's like a, a dance or something maybe. Does the robot get in your way? Um, sometimes, yes, but if it's planned properly, then it's, it's not really a problem over there. It's like, okay. If you plan properly how you, where you're gonna put the robot, where you're gonna stand, it's 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 not really um, a hindrance. But of course, it's gonna be a hindrance when something happens in the patient. Okay. Because there's a big um, machine over there that you can't really get over it mm. immediately once you need to say open. Yes. Yes, mm. because you need to take it out. True. Um, instruments are there holding holding inside and you have to take it out quickly. Yeah. For, for the sake of our audience, can you tell them what type of robot we have? Oh, so we got the um, Da Vinci XI, which is the most versatile um, robot um, with Da Vinci uh, intuitive um, that we have. And we got the two console, so two surgeons can operate at the same time on, on one patient. Amazing. Very good, yeah. it is. It's amazing to see. It's the most flexible because you can rotate it 180 degrees. Okay. So anywhere you want to place the robot, it can be done. Wow. Mm. Unlike the previous um, robots, it needs to be properly um, put on a specific area so you can, um, the robot can um, do the operation or like can reach your target organ. Okay. But with this one, it's basically very flexible that nice. you can put anywhere in the room so yeah mm, fantastic. very good yeah it's amazing yes what well, cleveland clinic abu dhabi what does the robotic program look like what cases do we cover or what oh, yes um i think even before i joined um cleveland clinic abu dhabi there's already a robotic program in place yes. especially by the general surgeons they've done like those um uh lab colis, yes. the liver even, yes. things like that. They've, they've, um, yeah, prostatectomies, yeah. yes. So, um, gynae, they've done yes. that already. But uh, in, in, in our area in level two, like the heart and lung, it, it was, I think they, it started when we got Dr. Usman. Correct, yes, with came, the thoracic. Yeah, yeah, with thoracic. So, 
by then I've looked at like because I got a background in in uh, robotic surgery yes. like I take unto myself like oh I remember when I started yeah like like no one teaches me everything so it's like all on my own I have to like learn learn and, and things yeah so it's like because I get um, background in thoracic surgery uh, in robotic surgery so I was like I take into myself like oh I should help my colleagues true because most of my colleagues in level two in HVI doesn't have any um, robotic surgery um, background most of them are very straightforward cardiac nurses yes yes so, Open big cases. We yeah. Like, yeah. Had so, you done robotic thoracics before? Yes, yes, you yes, had. yes. Yeah. Wow. I hadn't come across them until Dr. Osman did no, them No, me either, which is interesting. Yeah, very interesting. I like what you add though, Shinjiro. It's a true nursing passion. Like you want to share your knowledge with your other colleagues and make it easier. I always feel Yes, like because I know the journey is not going to be like easy because yes. most of the time when we talk about robotic it's like oh can't do that there's too many things to like do or it's an expensive equipment i don't want to mess with it or things like that so it's one of the nurses fear of like I know it. of the unknown i think the look of the room sometimes is daunting for an operating room nurse when you're used to open cases yes but you came up with an amazing education program and plan here at cleveland clinic Abu Dhabi. could you tell us a bit about that so yes yeah, so when i asked um, my colleagues in level two who are the ones with um, uh, experience with robotic, yeah. most of them said, uh, I've seen one, but I haven't been involved, really involved in it. So, and then I asked level three on what they have done with their um, robotic training. So I found out that there's not really like a, a um, what do you call this, an education program or a training program for, for, for nurses okay. mm. to get involved in robotic surgery. And since Dr. Suman, probably does his surgery is like 70% or 80% robotically. True. So I said, oh, it's going to be a big bulk of our uh, thoracic cases would yes. be um, robotic. So it's, it's nice if every one of my teammates would yes. be able to like, you know, have a knowledge on the robotic surgery. True, yeah. Because I think in the long run, if we're going to do that, and it's going to be like a... Um, Easier for the team. True, it's an asset, right? If yes. everybody in your team can be of the same can, standard and understanding mm. of the robot. And also staffing wise, it would yes. be easier for us. True. Like dynamics. Not like, you know, everyone can do it, so anyone can yeah. be in the room. True. It's yes. So so what I did was because I was also involved when I was in Australia, New Zealand doing um, setting up robotic um, uh, programs for our um, previous hospitals. So I Kinda kind of have a knowledge on how to implement the program. So I've reached out with the, our um, vendor or our um, robotic rep to do the training. And so we set up a evidence-based training that would really like with simulation, with theoreticals and Amazing. things like that. So, cause it's different when you just do a, um, what you call this, a training that's like more on theoretical or it's more like um, what you call this, uh, hands-on. Yes. It should be a combination of both Agreed. and also simulation because yes. it's really hard with, with robot that you're going to do um, learning once you're inside the operating room. True, it's yes. really hard. And an it needs to either. be like, needs more simulation. And yeah. I think confidence-wise for the nurses would come with... Um, constant um, use and exposure yeah, of the robot. And repeated use. Repeated I know I learn use. best when I mix up both with the theory and the yeah. practical hands-on yes. also. And I, I also appreciate very much this um, is a precision uh, instrument, um, very delicate. We don't want it to be um, sort of um, damaged in a way that it reduces the degree of precision because the main benefit to the patient is that there's no torsion to the surrounding tissue, tissue and yep. patients recover from their surgery way quicker with yes. way less pain. So it's highly beneficial. 
But I, I also know that you've had to be involved with teaching the nurses sort of how to care for it and move it so it doesn't get damaged either. Yes, so yeah. <clears throat> so in our training program, it's not only troubleshooting, um, handling of instruments. It's like, it's like a, what do you call this? A nursing um, care plan. Yeah. We got a pre, intra <laughs> and all, post. Post off. Okay. Yeah, so intra, you have to check everything is all right. Intra-op would be your handling of instrument, post-op would be um, how do you take care of all the um, equipments. So it's the same as that as concept. So preparing the robot, so you, you know how to turn it on, set it up, at, um, what's needed to be, everything should be all right. Intra-op, you should all have your instruments needed by the surgeon, and then how properly you can handle it, if there's a, um, something wrong on it or the robot some some um, problem you should be able to troubleshoot it and confidently say that to the surgeon that hey there's something wrong with the robot yes. or your arm is um, pressing on the thing you, you need to uh, move it up can you move your other hand so that it won't cross each other or okay. things like that because sometimes you can't see it yeah. as you you can see it in the field yes. he's on his um console so he might say oh I, my hands are not really um, reaching the uh, target organ okay it might be because they're clashed yeah clashing outside so it's okay. your responsibility also and post up of course like post um, op, you need to um, how to take care of the the instruments that's mm. been used how to um, uh, set up again the, uh, the robot for the next case Things like that. I certainly appreciate your passion to educate <laughs> others. Uh, we're very fortunate to have you and that great attitude. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. So I think um, it's been a great conversation yeah. today with Shinjiro. I hope we've inspired some of you to consider robotics as a specialty within the operating rooms for your careers. And uh, thank you very much, Shinjiro, for coming in. Uh, participating in the podcast. Thank you, Mireille. Thank you. Um, and we um, thank you all for joining us today.